Hello, my name is Graciela Fuente from Argentina. It is an honor for me to be part of this international course on neuropathic diabetic food and its consequences. I will be talking about clinical practice, neurological evaluation, quantitative sensory testing, and its diagnosis of neuropathy. I would like to begin highlighting some concepts about diabetic neuropathy. And I can say that this is the most precocious, the most prevalent, and the least known of all the microvascular complications associated to diabetes. There are also some facts about diabetic neuropathy that I would like to share with you. First and foremost, this is an underdiagnosed complication. On the other hand, it produces a substantial impact not only on quality of life, but also on life expectancy. From the clinical point of view, the most common variety is the sensory motor polyneuropathy, that is to say the SPM. And besides, it covers a systemic compromise affecting somatic, autonomic, and central nervous system. Let's move to definition. And in this way, we can say that this DSPM is a symmetrical, length-dependent sensory motor polyneuropathy. And this whole picture is attributable to metabolic and microvessel alterations, which are the result of chronic hyperglycemia exposure, that is to say the diabetic status and cardiovascular risk. to think that it implies not only the lower limbs involvement, but also the upper limbs compromise. And here you can see a number of pictures showing this compromise in feet and in hands. Another important concept regarding somatic diabetic neuropathy is this. This is a diagnosis by exclusion and the diabetic patients can have other potential causes of neuropathic compromise, which must be considered. Regarding screening recommendations, we have to think that all diabetic patients should be assessed for diabetic peripheral neuropathy, starting at the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes and five years after the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, and then all diabetic patients should be screened for this complication at least once a year. Let's move to clinical evaluation. And in this context, we must listen and question properly all the patients because they deserve our attention. Also, it is necessary to perform a complete and an adequate physical examination. And last but not least, Education must be present at all stages, that is to say, during prevention, during screening, and of course, during treatment. Regarding food evaluation, in this context, we have to make the examination, and it should include inspection of the skin, assessment of food deformities. Regarding the neurological assessment, we have the 10 grams monofilament testing, with at least one other assessment, like pink prick temperature or vibration sensation. And we do not have to forget about vascular assessment, including pulses in the legs and feet. Let's move to neurological assessment specifically. And here for the diagnosis of DSPM, this diagnosis should include a careful history and evaluation of either temperature or pinprick sensation in order to test small fiber function. Besides, we have to evaluate the uh, large fiber function through the vibration sensation using a 128 Hz tuning fork. And as I have said before, all patients should have an annual 10 grams monofilament evaluation. Regarding temperature sensitivity assessment, this test can be performed with the tip therm device. It is a simple device 
or with a cold water tube and another tube with warm water. The tip therm or the tubes should be placed The test will, will be normal if the patient can feel the differences between cold and warm extremes of the tip therm or the tubes. Let's move to sensitivity assessment. And in this uh, case, we will be screening the loss of protective sensation. Here we can perform three different tests. One of them is the eat switch test, where the examiner with the tip of his index finger must touch in a softly way the tip of the first, third, and fifth fingers of both feet of the patient for one to two seconds. The test will be normal if the patient can feel this softly touch. Then we have the 10 gram monofilament and it must be applied on the surface of, of the skin of the patient with enough force in order to obtain the monofilament curvature. The monofilament must be put on the pulpejo of the first toe and then at least on the head of the first and fifth metatarsals of both feet. Finally, to evaluate vibration sensation through the 128 Hz uh, tuning fork, it must be applied with constant pressure on the bony part at the level of the dorsal side of the distal phalanx of the first toe. Here you can see a number of pictures showing the different tests. For example, the hip switch test on the left, then to the right, the different points where the monofilament must be applied with enough force in order to get the curvature of it and the right position for the 128 Hz tuning fork. Fine, let's move to quantitative sensory testing, that is to say, the QST devices. They estimate the damage of the fine fibers, and these fibers can detect temperature changes, and also can evaluate the thick fibers that perceive vibration. QST are used to diagnose the severity of nerve ending damage, and they can also help to assess responses to treatment. There are different types of QST devices, and here you can see on the left the nerve check and in the middle the case form. Regarding the nerve check, this is a quantitative sensory test to evaluate and diagnose peripheral neuropathies. This is a tool that it is a handheld device. It has a software and a hardware that allow to measure the thin and large nerve sensory fibers threshold through different stimuli like vibration, warm, cold, and heat pain tests. We have performed in Argentina a number of uh, evaluations with the nerve check, and it allowed us to obtain information about uh, the presence of peripheral neuropathy in diabetic patients, and it was in a better way compared to regular clinical questionnaires and the regular examination for diabetic neuropathy. Finally, I would like to leave some take home messages. And here, for me, the most important is to carry out systematic procedures and them include, first, to listen and question appropriately the patients, then to perform a complete and an adequate physical examination, in this context, both fit, the use of simple devices, the regular evaluation to screen this complication, and education, all the time education for the patient, for his family, in order to prevent diabetic neuropathy, and of course, other complications related to diabetes. And with this, I appreciate your attention and I thank for it.